examination of the galaxies of space, images begin to appear. Images of strange and powerful forces. But of all the forces in the universe, the two most powerful. Chris Westendorf and Clint Schweitzer. Prepare to explode. Champion versus champion. Title for title. It's the ultimate challenge. It's Sports Horror TV. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas to you, Merry Chris. Merry Christmas to you, Clint. It's like Christmas in April because it's the NFL Draft, and we're here ready to watch this sucker. That's right, and you know what? If we could decorate this tree, we would decorate it with all the players we want, and we would have all of them picked underneath the tree to... Blaine Gabbert! Oh! Gabe Jeremy. Breaking news, everyone, from the sports horn. Cam Newton has gone number one overall. I know it's shocking. We can all we can all be at rest now. Cody, how do you feel about the pig? Disaster. <laughs> what? You gotta be kidding me! Kristen Ponder ahead of Ryan Mallet? Holy shy soul! Do it! <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars have just moved up to the tenth pick to take Missouri's Wayne Gabbard. Chris, your thoughts? Your thoughts on this startling development? Well, I, I've got to say that I. I'm shocked that Jake Locker went before. Trade the pit. Trade the Trade pit. Trade the pit. Trade the pit. Yeah, yeah, baby. Love it. I love it. They trade. We traded the it. pick away in the first I, round. I want to know what we got. I want to know what we got, but it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> we beat him to the stage. Yeah. Chiefs, we were talking NFL Draft, uh, and the draft is now completed, so we have a lot to get into. The Kansas City Chiefs, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys, what's your grade, and what do you make of, of the picks that we made? And we'll start with you, Cody. Do you think that we had a passing grade in this year's draft? I do think that we had a passing grade this year due to the simple fact that we um, addressed a lot of needs that we had on the team. We got a center, we got um, a wide receiver in first. Um, got another quarterback, you know, um, you know we, dre we just addressed a lot of needs that, that we needed, so well, I give it a, a passing grade. Chris, now Johnny Baldwin was our first round pick. Yes. He is a receiver from Pitt. He was maybe not as high on a lot of people's boards. Do you think that he has the ability to line up on the other side of Dwayne Bow and stretch the field and become a number two receiver in this league? Because that's what we need out of him at this point. Yes, I, I really do. And I and the thing about it was, before the draft, before they really started analyzing and getting real deep into the draft, Johnny Baldwin was considered a top 15 pick. Now, then they had the character issues come up because he had some things in his past, which a lot of these guys do. The, the simple fact is, this guy's 6'5", he's 230 pounds, and he runs a 4, almost a 4'4". Four, four. So, I mean, he is an athlete from hell in my eyes, and I, I really think this guy can can do a lot on the opposite side of Bo. And, you know, with, with Todd Haley being an ex-wide receiver coach, he's one of those guys, look at what he did with Dwayne Bo. He can work with this guy, and he can really, I think, make him into being something special. So I'm well. It, when we when we initially took the pick, I think we well we have we have a clip of it here. When we initially took the pick, yeah, you guys saw our I, initial reactions. Yeah, to how it, it, was. it wasn't good. But the more research I've done on the guy, can, and, and considering the fact that I feel like Todd Haley changes those guys, I, I really feel like he'll turn out to be a good pick for us, and especially with the guys we got in the later rounds. So. Well, Cody, like you said, positions of need. And after that, you're talking about um, Rodney Hudson, the center from Florida, who's going to who play guard in college, going to be a center here. You had Alan Bailey, the defensive end. These are guys that, I mean, I think Piola did a good job of, of drafting for need. Uh, definitely wasn't looking best player available maybe in all those picks, but are these guys that can provide depth for us? And that, this goes all the way down to, you know, Jarrell Powell, 
in the in the sixth round Very guys excited. like that and they provide the depth that we need at those positions i think so i would have drafted a little bit more uh, offensive line in the draft yeah, would have been me i mean like Marcus Cannon was there very late, ready to, you know, I mean, that, I think that would have been a great pick later on in the rounds, but that's why they get paid the big bucks and we get to sit here and talk about it. Well, yeah. as, as you mentioned the other day, Cody, you, you said what we took out of this draft is that basically what we know is that nobody knows anything about No, it. Todd McShay, Mel Kuyper, these guys, they know no more than we do. Let's be honest. The way that this thing shook out, the way the teams were trading up, trading down, now, I think we were all fans of the fact that Chiefs traded back. Yeah. I think that at the time, we all wanted the Chiefs to take uh, Karimi right yeah. there when he, when he was available. But, you know, when we got in the second round and we took Rodney Hudson from Florida State at center, that he can also play guard. This guy is an, is an interior lineman we needed for depth. And I, and I think we were all excited. It made me feel better about the Johnny Baldwin pick. And then, to cap all that off, the third round rolls around. Justin Houston, still available. Hey, we had him going in the first. We had him going in the first, so to snag him in the third round, that's great value, you know. Well, what was the biggest shock? Because to me, the biggest shock is you're looking in the first round. Was it the fact that Alden Smith went before Blaine Gabbard or the fact that Jake Locker went before Gabbard and then Christian Ponder went 12 to the Vikings? Like, I think I think Jake Locker going to the Titans, that is going to be the biggest flop pick for them. <laughs> I think that they are going to be regretting that pick for a long time. And I think Blaine Gabbard said it best in his interview with John Gruden on ESPN when they had the quarterback camp. If you don't take me, I will beat you for years to come. They're in their division. He will beat the Titans for very many years, I, I truly do believe. He's got time to learn behind David Garrard. Well, Cody, how, how do you feel about how the way the quarterbacks played out? Because I think we all knew Cam Newton was going to go number one. But after that, it's kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> The biggest thing that surprised me is how far Ryan Mallett fell in the draft. True. Oh, man. I mean, holy cow. I guess the drug in question was, was not marijuana. <laughs> no, it was Sniff. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's that, that. Can we? I mean, yeah. Christian Ponder <laughs> early, early was a huge surprise. I think we all were shocked on that we one. We were. Wow. As you saw, man. again, we saw the, our reaction to that Christian one. Christian Ponder. I mean, Mallett, did, whatever he did, he ruined his draft stock. I mean, well, we'll see. He's now in New England playing well, behind Brady. The thing that I've noticed, and I, and I noticed it on the NFL Network, and I noticed it on ESPN, all these guys that break down the quarterbacks, Christian Ponder, the only thing they could put their finger on that the GMs are saying was he has that something. They don't know what it is, but he has that something. My something that I the that fact I think they could win the, has, SEC, the ACC in a weekend state was that exactly. something. Exactly. Like, I don't think that that's going to point out for them. <laughs> hey, I think but, hey, he had Rodney thing. Hudson anchoring his line. <laughs> <Hopefully> that, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. We've got that. Now, now moving on to our other third round pick, Alan Bailey. Uh, this is a guy that I had projected going mid second round. So I thought again we got great value. He's another one of those guys. If he puts on weight, he can play defensive tackle in our three four scheme. Or he can play that defensive end spot well, that he's very familiar yeah. with. How did you guys feel about the Allen Bailey pick? I thought it was a solid pick. I mean, we needed depth at that position. And, Cody, like, my question to everybody, and this is what's been brought up a lot, does this signal the end of Tyson Jackson's <laughs> stint in Kansas City? I don't know. I mean, quite possibly. Or maybe they're just going for more depth. I mean, you know, Glenn Dorsey is taking Glenn Dorsey a while to come around. It so is. maybe it's going to take Tyson Jackson a while to come around. Obviously, if you only saw something in him, and maybe it's there, it just hasn't come around. Yet. That's right. And, well, they, and they work all these guys out. You know, they get a chance to work out 30 players before the draft, and, and, and he was one of them. I mean, apparently, they saw something in him that, you know, that they didn't go. Guys, I think the shocking maybe part of this draft, if, and this is nitpicking at this point, but fourth taking Jaleel Brown, the corner from Colorado, was a little iffy to me because uh, Brown played opposite Jimmy Smith, and yes. they were the 110th ranked pass defense at Colorado. The reason I didn't like it is because one, I, one or two players right there were there for the taking, and both of them I think could have been more beneficial than Jalil Brown. And I would Ryan Mallett was still on the board. We could have took him. That guy that I'm telling you, that guy could turn out to be a great NFL quarterback. Cannon arm. Uh, the second guy, speaking of Cannon, Marcus Cannon was still available, projected as a second or a third round guy. We know, I know we don't know how any, any of these guys are going to turn out, but I liked Marcus Cannon in the second round, and I think he's the best lineman in the in the draft. And as it turns out, the Patriots snagged both of those guys in hey, the next round. The Patriots had a good draft as always, wow. trading picks. Do you who do you guys think had the best draft? Because I think the Cleveland Browns are the team that maybe made out the best. 
And to me, that seems to be the best. I, I think that I think the New England Patriots have the best well, draft by far. I mean, they to get do. Nate Sauter and then uh, to you know to lay some of the guys they landed in the second, third, and fourth round, fifth round. I mean, they added depth. They, they, they're just geniuses at it, and I think Pioli is going to help us. He showed that he's able to trade back, but I think it's obvious that there's still a lot of smart people up there in New England. Hey, one, one good thing about our draft, guys, fifth round, also Ricky Stanzi, the end of Brody Croyle. I hope so. <laughs> Cody, tell me that this is the end of Brody Croyle, and I don't have to see number 12, at least. Uh, I'm sorry, but 12. I don't think this is the end of oh, Brody Croyle. Oh, really killing don't. me. And, and why do you why do you feel that way? I'm just curious. I just there's a that, lot of Brody Coral fans out there. Yeah, too. I just don't think that um, you know they're going to bring a rookie in that's going to be able to, to play better than him or beat him out in camp. Right. I, just, I really not. don't. He's going to be the backup, and that's just the way it is. Um, if the guy can, could stay healthy, you know, I think he has. Here, he's got the size. He has more. Well, guys, so when we got into the later rounds, and I'm talking the, the you know, the, our, our last pick in the fifth round, we took a guy named Gabe Miller. He's a linebacker from Oregon State, a guy that a lot of people haven't heard much about. I actually had a hard time digging stuff up on this guy. Didn't do, didn't remember seeing his name at all on the pre-draft. And it, truthfully, I think they brought him in to be a special teams player. I think that's yeah. what he's there for. Now, our sixth-round pick, Jarrell Powell, yeah. that was an absolute steal right there for the Chiefs. He's going to be playing some nose tackle for the Chiefs in that 3-4 scheme. Well, how did you guys feel about that? They had him ranked very early. He was another slider like Marcus Cannon. We got him. Nick Wright even called it out. He said he was wanting Powell in the third or fourth round. So to grab that guy, yeah. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? I feel like we got a good depth there at yeah, the course. nose tackle. That's definitely a position to need. So Another Ole Miss player. That's three in the last couple of years. Yeah. Cause I'm out here grinding I do this for the streets The runners Cause I'm out here grinding I don't care what nobody said I'ma be me Stay hood, stay raised to the streets Cause I'm out here grinding Niggas talk about greatness Whenever they speak about me Cause I'm out here grinding I ain't spitting nothing with nobody Homie, I gotta get me me Cause I'm out here grinding I ain't slipping eight days I can go for eight The hot lady behind the camera is telling us it's time to wrap it up. It's yes. been great. The last two weeks uh, talking draft have been great. Oh, man. Tony, thanks for coming in and giving us your insight. It's yes. been invaluable. All the stuff this guy has done off the camera and on the camera for us. I mean, including sporting one of our new sports on t shirt. Guys, 15 bucks. You got to go get one. You got the, the tank tops are there for the girls. And again, don't forget our party. It's, now we're getting closed for three weeks away, guys. This thing's going to get exciting. So many. We got Big Sean Smith from the Kansas City Chiefs is confirmed today. He is sending me down. You guys are from the, oh. you guys are from the sports room? <laughs> <laughs>